So I've spent the last couple of weeks doing a lot of homework and trying to figure out like what's going on with this civil war. Like I wanted to like dig a little deeper because it just seemed like really superficial that people would want to use a different license and that that was keeping people from you know especially hardware companies from using the gpl license this that and the other and I, it just it didn't nothing computed right you know people are free to use whichever license they want i think so and I still hold to that view, right? Like, if you want to use the GPL 3.0 license, have at it, Haas. If you want to use the GPL 2.0 or the LGPL or whatever you want to do. I've been spending the last couple of weeks just reading some of the uh, court cases that have come up regarding the GPL license. I've also seen a couple of clips with Linus Torvalds where he explains why he doesn't support the GPL 3.0 license, why him and Stallman are literally at odds. There is so much to unpack. Uh, the first thing is on the docket. I, I just wanna just express my gratitude to the FSF and the EFF and many such organizations that have helped protect free and open source, right? That basically enforced the GPL licenses in court. You know, the FSF has went to court a few times to basically keep people honest. The EFF, the same, right? And there, there's been a lot of really interesting court cases. There was one, this was the SEO group uh, versus, um, versus IBM, you know, and uh, this actually threatened to end Linux as we know it. And this was way back in the day. And basically everybody thought that the SEO group basically owned Unix, which it turned out it wasn't even true. Then later we found out that they were probably bankrolled by Microsoft. And it's a really, really interesting story. Like all the underhanded stuff that Microsoft did to try to put an end to Linux is just mind boggling to me. I mean, for all my criticisms of Macintosh, they didn't commit the sins that, that Microsoft did against Linux. And no, not all as well. Like if you think that Microsoft loves Linux and all this other stuff, believe me, I, I got a bridge to sell you in Alaska. So I guess, I basically want to talk about how everyone got their underwear and a knot, okay? And how it all started. Well, it started with T-voization. So what is T-voization? How did it get started? Well, this was a term that was coined by Richard Stallman because some time ago, TiVo, a company that made DVRs and used Linux, they complied with the letter of the law, the letter of the GPL agreement by recent releasing the source code, okay? But it used cryptographic signatures to prevent modified kernels from booting on their devices. So like other devices couldn't just run the source code because the cryptic, cryptographic signatures were talking to the source code. And Richard Stallman, you, you know, like he just, shit himself over it right like he was like oh my god you can't do that and i get it to some degree but they come up with this new license a gpl 3.0 and of course linus torvalds he says wait a minute here it's way too much it's a little overreaching and i like the gpl 2.0 and as far as the linux kernel is concerned we're going to use the Linux, the GPL 2.0. And, and so that's kind of where this rift started because they're like, yeah, we're not going to make all of these, um, hardware companies use the GPL 3.0. And then Linus talked about a bunch of underhanded stuff that the FSF did. And it got to the point where Linus Torvalds just got fed up with the FSF and decided never to have anything to do with them ever again. 
So there's two things that I think Richard Stallman should understand. The first one is about the license. People are, cho are free to choose which license they want to use, but not only that, they could come up with a new license and just cut you out, like any contribution you ever made. And this whole like GNU slash Linux thing is just ridiculous because everybody knows that Linux is not just Linus Torvalds. We get it. Also, GNU slash Linux sounds retarded. Okay, I'm just gonna say it. Okay, commercially it's just not viable. It won't catch fire like if you just say Linux. So what will happen when if the FSF sticks around? Honestly, nothing. I don't think there'll be anything that happens if the FSF is allowed to stick around. I think one of the complaints that I see, especially with T-voiceation, is that the FSF, they basically, you know, want to tell people how to use their hardware and their software together. Honestly, like, which hardware company is going to sign up for that? Which hardware company is going to use that license in that context? I mean, honestly, I, I don't think anyone will do it. If I'm being perfectly honest, I honestly think that, you know, if you leave hardware manufacturers to run source code and just be happy to get the source code back, I think we're even, we're good, as Linus Torvald said. And I think Linus Torvalds is more right than he is wrong. And I think actually that Richard Stallman and his cohorts are just completely clueless. So I don't watch a lot of Linux YouTube or Linux blogs or vlogs or whatever. I, I, I just don't consume that kind of content normally and there's a lot of reasons but mainly it's because everyone has an opinion opinions are like sphincter muscles i know i have my opinions and I, I i make them known on my channel that's what i do but the one thing that i would say is that i've been listening to like distrotube and luke smith and a lot of other people talk about the fsa right only i think they're completely wrong I don't really care one way or another what happens with that license, whether we continue using the GPL license, whether we come up with a new license. It doesn't bother me one bit, like how I use my computer. So the FSF, they have this uber libertarian viewpoint of tech, how it's supposed to work. That's why they have the copy left license. And, um, you know, it's been... I don't know, associated with communism, although I think that's a little unfair, but the fact is, is they use these Nazi-like tactics to enforce it. And like they take people to court over really small things. And if somebody gets around one aspect of their license, instead of saying, well, that's an exception, or, oh no, we, we, we need to lock it down even further and keep people from doing what they want on their own hardware. I don't think that that's the right move either. So I think that, you know, we're at this really interesting place. But I have a genuine question. And this is to everyone. And this is an honest-to-God question that I have. If Linus Torvalds is clearly against the FSF as he is, why are so many people calling for his removal? I still haven't figured that one out. He is clearly on the side of the people who want to get rid of the FSF, but those same people want to get rid of him as well. And there's a lot of, you know, a lot of articles calling for the removal of Linus Torvalds and pretty much anyone who has anything to do with the kernel as we know it. And um, I know a lot of people say that Linus Torvalds is very difficult. I'm, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. And I'm going to defend Linus on this one. So here's the thing. He has a set way of doing things because 
they work, right? He found, you know, a system that works for him and his team. And if he had to capitulate to everyone, he'd probably never get a break. He'd never get time with his family and the whole nine yards. And he's just not willing to bend. I get that. I mean, is that so hard to understand? I mean, at that point, you probably should just learn to do things the way he does them. I don't know. Isn't that reasonable? I think comparing Linus's need for balance when it comes to kernel development and what Richard Stallman does with the FSF are kind of night and day. If you take a look at like what's been going on with Bcash FS, for example, this is another example of like Linus Torvald's like, hey, I need things to be done this way. This is how I want everything done. Just like this. And, you know, honestly, if you take a look at even some of the contributors to the Linux kernel, there are some people who probably don't entirely agree with Linus Torvalds. But at the end of the day, Linus Torvalds is like, hey, I don't need like all this extra work. Like when you, you know, give me a you know, a piece of code that doesn't compile, for example, or something, or you throw a bunch of changes and, and uh, they're not properly tested. And, and when you do all of this stuff, it just makes his life, you know, impossible. And so I think you have to kind of learn to do things his way. But this idea that, that he is anything like Richard Stallman is kind of laughable. So what do you what do you think we should do? Should we get rid of Richard Stallman and Linus Torvalds and the old guard? Should we replace a GPL license with something else? Should uh, should we just quit using the GPL 3.0 or should we use it? I mean, what are your thoughts? Leave me a comment down below and also um, I'll leave some you know, reading material in the section below that you guys can check out. And in the meantime, you know what? Be just like Russell. Yeah, he gave me some money a little while ago. You can always give me some money as well. And uh, binge watch my stuff if you feel so inclined, right? And just have a great rest of your day. Ciao.